I suppose the message of Firecracker is definitely one of watch and feel the forces of your own emotions as they are displayed right there in front of you. It's kind of an open heart surgery in a fabulistic way. Firecracker is a, a rare movie. It's not going to be like other movies they've seen. The story just fascinated me. It was amazing. And I've been obsessed with circuses and carnivals and oddities and just weird tangled stories. The kind of stories that, that are sort of uh, illuminating the human condition and centered on a few characters but have a universal kind of appeal. And the Firecracker had all of that. And just Steve's whole vision is so complete, his artistic vision. It's, it's a very interesting story, a very different, different movie in that way. It's surreal. It's more like something you've imagined, something you've dreamed. Uh, quite the, uh, the train wreck, but uh, a beautiful one to see. I think it was Christmas 1993 when Stephen was home for Christmas from CalArts and uh, we began talking about the, uh, the true story around which Firecracker was created. And uh, Stephen had never heard the story before and he asked about it and he became intrigued. And then uh, after he finished Pep Squad and began to work to talk about his next project, Firecracker was always the one that he wanted to do next. We talked about whether to do Firecracker instead of Pep Squad, but, but the, both he and I concluded that he really needed to get a film under his belt. Uh, and, and Pep Squad was one that, while black comedy is difficult, it, 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 was, it would have been an easier one, a more appropriate one to do first. I enjoy working with my son. Uh, we, we get along good. Uh, and so it's, it's been a labor of love, and, and we've had great fun doing it. I think it's been a very good experience. It's a different way of working than I'm used to uh, in some, sometimes, you know, because some of, the, some of the coverage that we're doing and things like this are not, you know, not, they're not standard, but they're a little bit different than the way I've been, I was trained. So... Um, for the first week or so, it was a little bit more difficult for me because you go in there and you're going to shoot a scene and then you're going to do certain shots. But Stephen always has this vision, or he's had his vision for about five years of how he was going to cut the entire movie together. So you have to trust that he knows exactly what he needs and, and give him just that because he's the director, you know, and that's... That's basically one thing that you, I was trained in school was that, you know, you can make suggestions and you can, you can give your opinion, you know, but you need to trust the director because it's their, it's their vision of how they're going to put it together. And, you know, when Stephen would say which shot we were doing or what type of coverage, basically I would kind of line it up to where I thought where he wanted it and then he would dial it into exactly what he wanted and then we just went from there. He reminds me of Hitchcock. You know, Hitchcock was very playful, but very exacting. Very playful. Hitchcock was a big toddler. He loved to fool people and trick people. He, he, was, he was great. He was like shrewd, but playing games all the time. Incredible combination. Stephen, if he, if he likes it, and he's looking at what he just got, and he can't imagine anything better, and it's exactly what he would have wanted, and he just says, okay. He doesn't get a cover shot. He doesn't do it again. He doesn't try to get two of them because he has it. And it's very interesting because I've sort of never heard of that. I mean, even if they loved it, they get a second one. So it's interesting he'll move along. It's very lighthearted of him, confident, like, some, like someone playing a, a, a happy game, you know, something fun, lighthearted that you, you love. You know, I had the opportunity to get to know him before making this movie, not necessarily personally. I only met him personally once because we live, you know, across the country from each other. But um, I talked to him a lot on the phone, and he'd send me his storyboards. He works so incredibly visually, and, and the storyboards really explained his, his commitment to the project and his understanding. And he really has, like, a really distinct vision of how this story should be told. And, you know, part of your job as an actor is to, you know, first and foremost understand who you're playing, 
but there's a whole element of it is is that fitting fitting who you believe you're playing into the director's vision. But it you know it, it's kind of fascinating. It's it's a very distinct way of storytelling, and um, in some ways I found it incredibly liberating because you just thought, well, this is the way he sees it. So how can I make this work? And you know beyond just being visual, his you know, his perception in a lot of areas really runs, run a lot deeper than that. So he's a wealth to, you know, if you get stuck in a situation, he's sort of like a wealth of information to go to. And he, he just is clear. He could say yes or no. He made me feel really comfortable about the idea of even thinking about it, even entertaining the idea. And I wouldn't be here if he wouldn't have twisted my arm, both of my arms, several times in a very clever way that didn't, hurt me. <laughs> the biggest surprise was probably how make-believe it all is. I didn't realize that how much of it was really illusion. Stepping back and looking through the camera eye, every time I had a question, Steve would go, look. And I'd look through it and go, oh. He's so used to these visions of his and these colors and these juxtaposition of form. It's so vivid in his in his spirit. In that sense, he's like Hitchcock because a lot of the movie is already in him, and he's not he's not uh, sorting about finding it or having to think about things in in a, in a heavy way. So he's lighthearted, and it's been fabulous working with him.